Hello guys, it's time for the reaction of this My Little Pony Grimdark reading called Rainbow Factory. My Little Pony Grimdark reading. It is 57 minutes and 13 seconds long. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, this is a reading by Sparrow. I know it took him a long time to edit. Goodness sake. Oh, he's got guts, hasn't he? And even that sounds gross, he's got guts. No one's gonna have gut any guts in this story because how many reactions I've done when it when it comes to uh Rainbow Factory I've seen some animation readings. I've seen some animation some gruesome animation readings. Literally. And this is the actual fanfic being read out. Um Yeah. Uh, okay, we're going to get this reaction started in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, it's starting with the creepy music, as you know how the stories like this do. Few discretion is advised. And There's long Ooh, been hello, Rainbow. how exactly rainbows are made in Equestria. Classic um, logo there. ...are employed in the remote department of the weather factory. Almost all oh, of them do their own work. What's known is that the great me, Bell. Spectra, the individual colors of the rainbow, flow through large grates... And oh, I've heard that before. Fats. Spectra. From there, from workers carefully um, equally mixed awoken. Spectra into the coagulated rainbow pools that duct and run through the factory and the surrounding city. Next, that mixture is pumped to the floor below, where other employees atomize it and store it until the active weather pegasi deploy it in the field. However, no one knows how individual spectra is made. Supplies no, never it's a mystery. In, leaving not even a clue of what goes oh, come on! Tourists while visiting the factory are treated to an extremely foreboding and plain wall with massive rainbow blood. It's basically rainbow blood, isn't it? Any pony at any time. While most of the facility's various signs and architecture is bubbly and welcoming, the rainbow factory bubbly and welcoming. Is welcoming. Protected by harsh. Are you fucking mind? Are you out, out of your death. fucking mind? Is that, is that welcoming? The cloud wall was made. It's a fucking prison. White of the rest of the city but of a black, quietly thundering fog. To become an employee of the Upper Rainbow Factory meant sacrificing any life outside those black walls. Workers are sworn to secrecy and forbidden from leaving and live inside the facility itself. Those few who ever managed to make it out not in a body bag were twisted and disturbed, too damaged to ever bring themselves to talk about it. A lot of I don't think you want to talk about dark it. Dark magic from captured unicorns, chemicals, and environmental hazards that no same pony would tolerate, and even thoughts of another unknown sister of Celestia's, destined to create the spectrum. Unknown sister of Celestia's. Mm. None of them okay. could be farther from the truth. No. Come on, Orion. We're gonna be late for a final test. Scootaloo called to a friend of hers. She was older, now in her last year of flight school. She, Hello. Like all other Pegasus, in I like school, this. Was terribly nervous of the final test. I like the Those who passed the avian sound to there. The world to find their cutie marks that they haven't yet, and become working ponies. A little known, or at least little thought about fact, was of what happened to the fillies that failed their test. While uncommon. One or two from every class generally. I wonder how this goodly ended up there in the first place. Maneuvers. Those who failed their tests were looked down upon in the worst of ways, shunned and hated. Cloudstill had always bred a form of nationalism amongst its occupants. If you weren't the best, or didn't show the potential of being the greatest, you weren't allowed to be part of the glorious collective. Skulu moved a little to the side as Orion. A tall yet fairly skinny pony settled next to her. He fluffed his light brown feathers and gave a worried attempt at a smile as he stared around where he sat. They were sitting in the large open waiting room, onlooking the Colosseum, 
with all the other graduating Pegasi. I wonder how, how you, I was wondering how, how you, how you imagine the, the Colosseum, how big is Orion it? Orion glanced at it and gulped. What's the matter, Orion? You afraid of getting a dead-end job on the snow line? Orion chuckled a bit, then closed <laughs> his eyes and said, <laughs> No, it's just, I don't know. I don't think I can do this. What if he's, I fail? What if I don't he's, fail? He's but dead. Bad enough to still be disliked by everyone. I don't know if I can take being deported. Where do we even go, anyways? Scooby gave a right. He's a worried. Punch. I, he sounds a bit worried there. No one knows you, Dolt. And we're not going to fail. Everyone here is going to be fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll pass at least. Thanks to the tips from Rainbow Dash, I'm sure to be fine. She laughed. Oh, That's yeah, some sure. confidence, that Scoodly. Me. That's actually just as, if not even more reassuring, than the psychopathic hate every pony here seems to love to spread. Quit panicking, scaredy wings. The only one here I think even might fail is that yellow pony with the dark green mane. She's the one who was out sick for that month, you know. Scoodly replied. Oh, yeah, that, who's yeah. that then? Who's Ryan that? remembered as he craned his head in the other pony's direction. The one who had that bad case of hoof and wink. She looks pretty confident. <laughs> right? What? Hoof and wink? Hoof and wink? Turning to look at the factory herself. What sort of this is that? Not a fear, but pride. Oh, come I hope on! I get some cool active weather job. Can you imagine? Everyone in Ponyville or Philadelphia staring up at me going, There goes Scootaloo. Such an amazing flyer. And from Cloudsdale, there can be no doubt. That would be something, I'll admit. Mind you, just coming from Cloudsdale, who wouldn't be in a... Exactly. How big is Googaloo, though? Praise the flock. Places, places, every pony. A massive buff Pegasus walked towards the end. Places, of the everyone, scene. places! We're going to do this by name. Your educators are just on the east side of the field. Do not, I repeat, do not fly too far west. If they lose sight of you for any reason, you'll be failed immediately. Take Ooh. deep breaths, stretch your wings one last time. The test will consist of three sections. Weather clearing, agility, and finally, recovery. Clear the cloud, fly through the hoops, and then fly to the marked elevation. Close your wings for at least three seconds. Any less and you'll fail. But keep in mind, there's no extra points for extra seconds. Finally, recover where you hit the cloud floor. Understood? Any questions? The instructor paused and carefully glanced at every pony. Yes, I hate you. Everyone's eyes were completely focused on him, and none were creased with confusion. All right, Aurora Dawn, you're up first. Clear, fly, fall, complete. The yellow pony nodded and walked quietly yes, up to sir. the starting ramp with purpose. She stared at the watching judges. Waited for a nod from all three, and then took off with powerful force. Oh, the ramp bounced slightly with the force of the takeoff. Every pony watched as Aurora quickly reached the starting up. Oh yeah, Aurora! And began a direct and purposeful. Has he got a rainbow, of Aurora? Clouds. With expert timing and intelligent angles, the sky was soon empty of any moisture. Scootaloo and Orion watched with open mouths as they watched the first testee pull fast and tight turns expertly shooting dead center through each and every hoop. Finally, Aurora pulled herself up to the proper altitude, hovered, and closed her wings. The group of students gasped as she started plummeting down towards the clouds and counted breathlessly. One, two, oh, come three. On! They sighed as they watched her wings open in the correct amount of time, collectively holding that relief. Suddenly, Aurora's wings whipped upwards, and the group of students flinched in horror as they all heard the loud, hollow snap, only to be suddenly replaced Ooh. by an unending, piercing I hurt my neck that! Ooh. Many, unlike Orion, shielded their eyes with their wings, as others, like Skulu, could only watch, terrified as the blur of yellow, green, and red plummeted into a cloud with a dull thump. Wasting no time, the instructor oh, walked forward on! again as the three judges simply pointed down and started shuffling papers around. Speaking loudly, you failed? nothing had happened, he called out again. Daisy Fields, clear, fly, fall, complete. 
Scoogle and Orion stared slack-jawed as another pony gulped, and then walked forwards onto the path and took off. They turned back to the tuft on the cloud oh, my neck, man. and stared. Ow. As the wind blew the fragments that were thrown up from the collision away, oh, they saw the shivering yellow body attempt to move. Thanks, Wheezy Bell, you're fucking crash. scaring me! How fucking dare you! Third A spots. Clear. Fly. Fall. Complete. Fall. Complete. Aurora still struggled to walk, wailing with every step. Her legs weren't broken. She could no? use them fine. But it was obvious the pain from her wing joints and the loss of her potential oh, life was crushing her. Scooloo felt Orion shuffle uneasily. Tears welling in his eyes as a frown formed. Don't show face. sign of weakness. All the shine. Clear. Fly. Fall. Complete. Complete. No one's coming to help her. Orion see it through his closed teeth. Scooloo felt extremely sad for no the No one cares in the fucking rainbow but factory. See herself helping her. She would be failed herself and sent away, far away from Cloudstale and any familiar place in Equestria, to a place where she and any other failed students could never stain Cloudstale's reputation. It was a terrible shame, but Skulu could not fail herself. She couldn't fail her friends. And she definitely could not fail Rainbow Dash, not after the care and help she had given Skulu her whole life. Scootaloo blinked the tears from her eyes and forced herself to watch the competing Is Scootaloo up to the One challenge though? That's off, the thing. Is Scootaloo up for the challenge? flew to the east gate under the judge's spot in the stands. That's all Scootaloo focused on. Pass the test. Fly to the gate. Live a happy life. Orion Solstice. Clear. Fly. Fall. Complete. No. What? What? The instructor took a step back. Uh, one raised in the air. You can't just refuse your flight test. Get out there before you piss the judges off. No. D don't even pretend you care about my future if you don't care about hers. Orion defied, unsure about him. Don't push your you luck. You want me to get a good life, and yet you let those that fail suffer unbearable pain. Get the fuck onto that field before Shit! I kill myself. The instructor shouted menacingly. Fine, Orion spoke sharply before walking onto the ramp. Wow! He stared at the judges, waiting for the individual nods. And the second they came, he took off. However, long before the starting altitude, he turned sharply and landed gently next to Aurora. She turned and looked at him, blood running down her forehead and sides, and tears streaming down her face. What are you doing? You'll fail, like me. You'll be exiled. I'd rather be exiled from a place that treats ponies like this than live my life while others don't live theirs. Aurora smiled, happiness briefly replacing her sadness in her blackened, puffy eyes. Until she stumbled this again, is not, and an intense pain um... flashed across her body. Orion leaned in close, using his wing to break Family the friendly loving. He stared up at the judges, beaming hate with his vision. They stared down, unaffected, and simply pointed Who down are the judges? Looking back Who the is judging the, the judges? Skulu stood shocked, hardly hearing the name called. She moved numbly up the ramp, never taking her eyes off her friend and the pony he sacrificed himself to help. After a brief moment, she shook her head, recovered her thoughts, and looked to the judges. Thoughts passed through her head as she watched them all nod. She glanced at Orion. He wasn't looking at her. She took off, heartbroken. Instinct kicked in as the familiar rush of wind cooled her and blew her thoughts away. She stopped at the right altitude and then launched again, sensing and seeing every cloud. Formulating a game plan. You must In be a skill a flyer couple dozen to seconds, open your wings at, at the right she time. Did a quick though. loop in mid flight, aiming at the first hoop. With the powerful flash of her wings, she propelled forward through the first ring, and then the second, and then the third, expertly turning and drifting. She curved in towards the second last ring, near the bottom of the field. As she descended, she caught sight of Orion and Aurora almost at the west gate now. Orion turned his head and smiled weakly. 
Scooby's focus shattered. <sighs> Orion knew what he did. He cared about her. He'd miss her, and he'd never get to say goodbye. Skulu cranked into the bottom part of the ring, falling backwards several feet and hitting the ground. With a sudden intense flash of fear, she flipped herself onto her hooves and what? began flapping her wings, levitating off the ground. Maybe that didn't count as a failure, she thought. Um... She can still fly. There was no destruction on the field. She spun around to the judges. Three hooves pointed down. Scootaloo started crying there. Tears welled up, imploring her vision. This wasn't right. This should not have happened. None of it. Orion should have passed his test and cheered her on from the east gate. Yes. She shouldn't have looked at him. She should have focused on flying. But there was no room for excuses. Defeated, Excuses she won't help towards Orion at and all. down next to him. She looked at him with her purple eyes. He looked back, offering a smile. <sighs> you did a good job. Skulu dropped her. Shit! Head. She then walked around. Her room, Sorry. Lifted a wing of her own and helped Aurora walk to the west gate. Before them stood a long, unlit hall with only a cheap sign stuck to the wall. Notifying test failies to proceed down the hall. They waited, only briefly, to gather themselves and prepare for where they would be taken, and then all stepped forward together. Against an empty carriage at the end of the lonely hall were three imposing ponies, leaning in a disinterested and boring pose. One of them happened to look up as the sorry looking trio stumbled out into the open. They were on the bottom edge of the Colosseum, with the vast rolling hills and plains of Equestria visible. One question that people ask. Hey boss, we got some dim worthless Pegasuses. The first Pegasus. one called to an even bigger pony on the other side of the How carriage. big is the Rainbow Factory? I suppose it's get to work time, isn't it? Yes. Cool it, hot shot. There may be more too. No, I was the last student to go. Skulu spoke in sobs. Orion could only hang his head. It's... it's... She paused and then breathed deeply, determined to remain as strong as she could. It's just us three. Aurora's wings. They're broken. She needs help. Ain't that just a crime shame? It is. What's it to us? All the berry she don't even come flying back to us no more. We may have failed our damn test, but that doesn't mean we're not worth keeping alive. Scootaloo shouted in a flash of rage. She was determined to hold on to as much dignity as she could. All right, all right, sheesh. You all hey, Patrick, strong Dr. for Harazi standing up for, your, for yourself. I just washed that thing. You other two in the cart. Orion and Skulu hopped in the, into the carriage and got as comfortable as they They'd could be off. seats. But make sure to aim for Aurora. Sorry, sweet belle, as that's soon bad as the joke. Third of the large ponies finished bandaging her wings. Aurora carefully stepped into the vehicle and lay down on the bench at the back. Skulu inched in closer to her and leaned down to talk as the door to the carriage slammed shut. The boss pony was inside the back, standing by the door, watching each of them. So, Scootaloo began quietly, trying not to speak too loud. You're Aurora? Yes. I'm Scootaloo. I'm sorry we had to meet like this. Any meeting of a friend is a welcome meeting. Aurora spoke gently, with sincerity in her eyes. That is nice. We did our best. That's all we can say. Yes. That's you... all any of us can say. You did your best. Say that the city of the deported isn't a good one anyways. The thought struck Scootaloo as she considered it. No one was ever told about where the Pegasi were brought. Most ponies considered it to be some odd land, like where the zebras hailed from. That made Skulu realize something even more. What's well, up with the music? Hey, it's changing. Where taking is where Zakora is from. Then there's got to be a way to get back. It's not as if we're banned from Equestria. Fluttershy, an old friend of mine, she's a Pegasus who lives in Ponyville. She never passed flight school. She never even took her test. They've never come and taken her away. 
Exactly. Yet. Aurora agreed with a nod. Yet. Orion overheard and offered his thoughts. I think the reason we're sent far away is because no pony from Klausdow ever wants to admit that someone who failed flight school could come from their city. What a fucking horrible place. Now that I think of it, it I is a back. beep effing Maybe place. Maybe that's why no Pegasus ever comes back. They just don't like Cloudsdale. You goddamn worthless ponies can hardly call yourself Pegasi. Boss spoke from the door. He was swaying ever so slightly. I really want to punch him! And moved to an unknown location. I really want to fucking Useless punch failures him. is what you are. No pony comes back from exile. Regardless of reason. Can't even pass your goddamn test. You three make me sick. Scoot you make me sick by being a bully, sir! Her wings and dove legs first at boss. You shut the hell up about us! You have no right to treat others like this! Boss raised a hoof and backhanded Skulu out of the air onto the floor. I can treat you however I want. You hardly classify as ponies to Cloudsdale, or any of Equestria for that matter. Now sit the fuck down and shut up until you get to your destination. Where are we being taken anyways? Not like we can tell anyone now, and I'm sure it's the delivery- Where are you being you taken? Oh, come on! Orion cautiously responded. Rainbow Factory, that's where Hell you're going. I know. We hand this carriage on to the ponies in suits, and we get a bag full of coins to keep quiet about the whole thing. It's how it's always been. For a thousand years. The three uh, fillies huddled together again. Rainbow Factory's been around for a thousand years. They kept quiet as they waited through the unbearable trip, all lost in their own thoughts. Family, friends, loved ones, and pets. All will never see them again, and some would never Ever find out again. why. Ever again. An hour passed, and then another. Finally, the uncomfortable quiet was broken by a sudden lurch as the carriage stopped in its flight. Ah, oh, there's my stop. You ponies play nice now. Have fun in wherever the hell you're sent to. The carriage door shut. Play open, nice. You and play nice. With a gust of cold wind. It was night outside now, with hardly any light to see at all. Skulu stared outside and noticed another figure staring in. It was dressed in a black suit, its tail dyed in unnatural black that never occurred in nature. This is like its face was covered by a dark Going to your death like a, in, in the gallows Assuming or something? Its mane, all that was visible were rose colored eyes, staring indifferently at the three ponies inside. They stopped on Scootaloo momentarily, unrecognizingly, but she stared back. A second passed. The dark pony slammed the door shut, and the carriage took off once again. What's At least we can talk now. Aurora whispered in the dark, but they had nothing to talk about. You're in the, the factory now? The carriage finally shuddered to a stop. The three desolate foals blinked their eyes awake, having all resolved to conserve energy for whatever came next. With a loud scraping noise, the door shook, then swung wide open. Several more ponies, obscured by masks and suits, were moving around the area. Scootaloo blinked like against a, the light from uh, what she was seeing. They were in a cloud building, unit? as their eyes adjusted like after a nuke, um, Several. The blackened ponies. A fallout shelter, around, sort of thing. Some holding clipboards, some carrying briefcases and other important looking items on their backs. The complex was full of machinery and signs. Pipes ran along the ceiling, and a loud whir ran in the background, occasionally joined with other industrial sounds. That is the the Pegasus device. Gasped. By the sound of it. This place, the architecture, it's also familiar. I think we're in the weather factory. Orion frowned. That can't be right. Yes, we were traveling in a way. Too long. We've got to be far away from Equestria by now. Not to mention the city. Actually, Scootaloo may be right. I noticed it was maybe the same amount of time from when we left the Coliseum to the place the carriage drivers walked. That it was from the swap place to here. But... Join the weather factory. Confused. Maybe that's just 
Maybe that's just a coincidence. Aurora amused. I think it's more. Mules, a large and powerful. I think it's more than coincidence. Several of the suited ponies moved to make way for a deep, dark red Pegasus dressed in a white lab coat. You degenerates are probably wondering where exactly you are. Yes. Stupid fillies. You're in Cloudsdale. The rainbow facility, to be correct. Allow me to show you around. What's going on here? Do you expect to use us as slaves? Because I'd rather be deported, thanks. Scootaloo yelled. Orion and Aurora got off their seats and stood behind Scootaloo, nodding in agreement. Like you failures have a choice. You'll be here for the rest of your lives. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? I am Dr. Atmosphere. My degree isn't a medical one, I shall assure you, in case you're picturing some oh, dreadful surgery on! going on behind the scenes. Ow, sweet bell! Strange how so many worthless pegasi get that idea. Scootaloo is not f- No, no. Worthless! My degree worthless! I'm one of the four cults in this facility. <sighs> I'm sure you've all had the tour of the lower factory, no? The three ponies nodded slowly, unsure of what was going on. Excellent. Who can tell me where the tour begins? Orion spoke up first. Where the spectra comes from upstairs and is mixed. Very good. What a pity you're utterly useless to the flock. You could have been a smart one. Dr. Atmosphere smiled sadistically and patted Orion on the head. But today, we're on the upper floor. Please follow me and don't get too far behind. Or one of my helpers will be forced to encourage you. With Kill that, you! He winked at the suited ponies. With nods, three of them at the rear leaned forwards and jabbed each of the Pegasi with tasers, shocking them to the ground. Dr. Atmosphere whinnied <sighs> in laughter as all yelped and fell and continued into a soft chuckle as they all stood up again. Scootaloo blinked more tears from her eyes and shook herself again, trying to lose the tingling in her nerves. She turned and quickly looked at each of the suited ponies, Taser, that, catching each of them um, in the eye. And well, there's not, good. uh, None cannon. None were the rosy-eyed pony from the carriage. Begrudgingly, she started walking behind the red engineer. You simply must be careful in this department. Dr. Amsfield Very careful. Told, not unlike the many tour guides in the lower floors. There's plenty of nooks and crannies and vents and vats one could fall into. One must be careful not to hurt themselves. After all, you're all hopeless as it is. Any more so, and even we could I think be. you're hopeless! He glanced behind himself maliciously as the three falls frowned in insult. They were walking down a series of halls, with vibrating machines and assembly lines lining the way, occasionally ducking under low-hanging wires or carefully stepping over steaming pipes. As they walked, though, the building became cooler and cooler. All three were watching, sensing, looking for any way out. They there couldn't see any. is now, no way out. A story. Cloudsdale is where the weather is made. Without us, the rest of Equestria would starve, freeze, drown, and generally would not be a very happy place. No. That gives us a special honor, one that can't be taken yeah, by Yeah, but how do you send cows all over you? Equestria how if you're fixed in one low and trust us place and location like and floating? Flying around wearing the clouds the Equestria is one big place! No, no. We needed to do something with all of you. And that voice. We got a delicious idea. Reminds me of. A thousand years ago. Those were some Prince, smart ponies. Prince Bluebot. It's like a Prince Bluebot voice. Of them these days, but I digress. Ha ha. Here now through these doors. Quickly now before more encouragement is supplied. Dr. Atmosphere opened a heavy looking door in a Dr. Crypt Dr. Corridor Atmosphere covered a hoof inside. <gasps> Skulu stared up at him. What? He Off in my hoof! Pony. Skulu and the others walked inside as he laughed again. Enjoy the rest of your pitiful life. <laughs> oh, stop the f And with that, he slammed the door closed. They all turned and looked at the big room they had been led to. It was fairly open, 
and empty, almost like a theater room. At one end of the room, there was six square vats, each one nearly full with individual spectra. Ugh. Above them was a peculiar looking What kind of spectra? Is it green? In central stack, six hoses broke off. Is it green? And right above each of the individual vats. At the top of the stack was a single opening, red with rust, despite the rest of the machine to be shiny and clean. Even further above was a fairly complex looking object with chains and gears hanging off of beams and pipes closely. Who Running built? Even higher than the who whole actually built the weather factory? Of scaffolding because Rainbow Dash couldn't be the leader. Couldn't be a leader for a thousand Down years. On the floor, a small collection of defeated, crying ponies sat, chatting quietly. Those suits, there, those are from the other flight school across town. Aurora informed, oh? sounding shocked. And those other ponies sitting over there, see? I remember a trip we went on once with Levitating Acres Private School. I remember that Levitation Levitating so, Acres Private this is School where all the failures go? Not deported, but forced to work forever? Yes. Orion sobbed quietly, in exchanging for helping someone. He had doomed himself and his good friend to a life of servitude. School reached a reassuring wing yes. over and lifted his chin. You're now a slave. He smiled at him, understanding to the river factory. At least we don't have to go through it alone. She cooed softly. Suddenly, there was a commotion in the group of ex students. One pony from an unidentified school took off, heading towards one of the doors on the scaffolding. Immediately, two suited ponies launched at record speed, and both clipped the flyaway with their tasers. Pony spasmed in air and then dropped like a stone with an audible crack as he landed in a violent burst of twitching. All the other ponies walked back, staring horrified at their friend. They watched, hopefully for a long time. A long time. He did not move. He's dead. Some cried softly. Most others turned away. Too as, far confused as, oh, to feel any more emotions. Oh, fuck off, Sweebo! Aurora quietly said to no one in particular. But you can't fly right now anyways, Orion questioned. That medic guy, Patches, or whatever he was called, he popped my wings back into their joints and bandaged up where my skin tore. I won't be winning any races, but I can fly again. They slowly walked forwards and joined the group of ponies, looking at each other with understanding sorrow. I, front and center, you inept mules. One of the suited ponies shouted. After the previous no display, offense. no one challenged that order, and stared at the scaffolding, just as one of the doors opened. A few official-looking pegasi walked in on the scaffolding and turned to look down on the group oh, with disgust. Stood onto a small podium set up in the center. I began speaking loudly and clearly. By now, you've all clearly determined that you are not going into exile. There is no deportation. There never was. You are in the factory. You will never leave the factory. And while you may all be called useless, that's also not entirely true. You're worthless to flock as a pony. But you still have purpose. Purpose to all the ponies in the land far and wide. You get to help us make rainbows. Beautiful, magical rainbows. Does that not excite you? No. The mysterious announcer grinned ecstatically, taking in all the disgusted looks from every foal on the floor below him. I thought so. It is such an honor, you know. It leaves every pony entrusted with the task speechless too. Now, do we have any volunteers? Again, every pony below glared with hate. One brave pony, a light pink one from Levitating Acres, walked forward a few steps, then yelled. How could you ever get away with this? How could Celestia or even I Lord know that, that boys tolerate it? It's slavery. It's torture. I think you'll find it's more than that. A second official pony walked out of the shadows and up to the podium. The pony was in a suit and masked. 
The first pony walked off the podium and allowed the second to talk. Scootaloo noticed that it was the rose-eyed pony from before. She watched more intently now. The voice was familiar. Rainbow Dash! A thousand years ago, when Celestia banished Luna from Equestria and sent her to the moon, she was charged with three tasks. She originally was in charge of raising the sun and showering the land with rainbows. Yes. But, with the moon being an additional task, she had to hand down the responsibility of rainbows. Celestia entrusted the Pegasi of Cloudsdale to make the rainbows for this her from when, uh, so the first dozen uh, um, Luna was ba banished to the moon then. Spectra. spectra is pure pigment, pure color. Everything is full of spectra. But you can't just harvest it. No. You can never separate color from an object. So, it was made artificially with magic. Magic. That is, until our top engineers made a breakthrough. They discovered an ingenious way to extract pigment. And it was so beautiful, even a simple machine could do it. But it couldn't be done with just anything. The nope. conditions had to be right. I'm perfect. What did those horrible people do? The pink pegasus screamed, growing angrier by the minute. The mysterious pony whipped off her mask, unveiling more than her rose eyes. Her skin was a light cyan, and her mane was a gorgeous rainbow. Several of the fillies gasped. Skulu's knees weakened as it hit her. Rainbow it Dash. Rainbow Dash. Of course it was. Skulu's thoughts raced through her mind, and the room started spinning. It couldn't be. Any it is. Twin, maybe? Perhaps mm. some neglected sister. No. Rainbow Dash could not be this evil. She was her friend, her mentor, her only family, even if not by blood. How? Oh, come on! How? How was all she could think? It had to be live ponies. Only in ponies where magic and spectra ran freely together. Only then could the spectra be separated. And it was such a beautiful idea. Such a wonderfully horrible idea. It worked so well. We could create exponentially more rainbows of better quality with real spectra. And it finally gave us a way to prevent Cloudsdale from being tainted by all those horrible pegasus which couldn't fly! Rainbow Dash threw her head back and laughed maniacally. Scootaloo could not take it. While all the other ponies were exclaiming their disgust and fear, running and screaming for where they came in, Scootaloo and backing off as suited can't believe it really. them and herded them I believe. back to the center of the floor. Skulu could not take it anymore. No. I thought you loved me! Huh? She turned and noticed the ember-orange Pegasus. I thought you loved me! How could you do this to me? I thought you cared for me! After all the help, all my life, you have treated me like a little sister! And I treated you like my big sister! You were my big sister! To me! You were the only family I've ever had and you knew it! Tears were pouring down her face now, obscuring her vision again. Her throat hurt from the crying and shouting, but she couldn't stop. After... after everything, you're just gonna let me die? I tried so hard for you! I thought... You love me. You loved me. She stared at the floor for a moment. Called it. Everyone was silent. Then Skulu looked up slowly. And while she couldn't see for the sadness in her eyes, she looked straight at Rainbow Dash, straight into those rosy eyes, past them, and deep into Rainbow Dash herself. Rainbow Dash returned the look. Her eyes revealed no emotion, no love, no care. He does Only apathy. Rainbow doesn't care now, really. Slowly, however, they glared at Scootaloo. Pure, seething hate erupted from Rainbow Dash's mouth. As she screamed in return. I did love you! I tried so hard for you! I taught you everything I knew in hopes you would pass your test! You had it in you, kid! I knew... I knew what they did here! Ever since I performed that sonic rainbow and they approached me, they wanted to find more ways to make Spectrum. They thought that if I was capable of making rainbows, I could help them make its components. Well... You could have said no, Rainbow! I learned a lot about this place. I'm the manager here now, you know. I worked my way up, in secret, pretending to only be simple weather control. 
How do you think I could afford that massive house over Ponyville? How do you- She trailed, shaking her head, remembering her anger suddenly. <laughs> I tried, alright? It was up to you to save yourself. You didn't just fail yourself. You didn't just fail Cloudsdale. You failed me. You failed me. And that's the worst thing you could have done. You aren't just dead to Cloudsdale now. Where's your fucking naughty, Rainbow Dash? The room tilted as Scootaloo tried to <gasps> Fuck comprehend sake. what she was told. Her mind broke as she was totally unable to focus on anything. She stumbled slightly until Ryan held open a wing and she clung to it for stability. Rainbow Dash noticed this and pointed and yelled with more fury. You can't have happiness. You ruined me. Now I'll ruin you. Workers! The brown one then. Him first. No! Scootaloo, Aurora, and Orion all jumped. Suda ponies cornered Orion, pushing the other two. Rainbow to Dash the is side. one of the hated ponies! Fuck sake! Out of the way to run. But one of the stallions spun around and kicked him. And what are you staring at? To his shoulder, and Orion collapsed with a shout. <sighs> Get back! More suits yelled at Aurora and Skulu as they dragged the whimpering Orion to the front of the room. The giant machine at the back started humming to life, and the assembly of chains lifted off the top and moved towards the floor. Everyone noticed that they were shackles now and the suits collapsed Orion onto them. Braving a look up, he turned to Scootaloo. Don't... Don't worry, Scoots. I love you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Orion. I... I love you too. Scootaloo gasped. Ship! With that, Sorry. the chains pulled tight and lifted the brown pegasus up all the way to the gears. The chains grew taunt. Man, the sound the effects are fucking scary. Straight Literally, down. they're scary. When the machine works better, the ribs are broken. River Dash explained. Oh, you were like that, wouldn't you? The chains spun around in opposite directions, twisting around. The screams almost covered the echoing pops and shattering noises. One or two jagged bones tore through his side, and his yells faded to a slow, quiet rattle of breath. The chains untwisted, and then the shackles opened, dropping the shattered pony into the single opening. With horror, you Scooter became Spectre, basically. Her brain overcome of what was happening, detached from all emotion. She noticed that the top of the machine was not rusty. It was blood. Blood, just like what was being tossed up from the mangled remains of Orion as the rest of his body was swallowed into the great machine, finishing with one lone hoof directed straight up. And then, nothing was nothing. left, as the hoses over the green and red fats of Spectrum started spewing their brilliant colors. Scootaloo's vision started to fade, and the last thing she noticed was Aurora's concerned, broken voice, saying her name as Scootaloo flopped. To the side. Scootaloo! Get up! Get up! Get up! No! Hurry! Scootaloo! Wake up! Wake up! Scootaloo shook her head, briefly wondering where she was and what was happening. In a flash, it all came back, and she jumped to her hooves. Aurora was shaking her, fright encasing her face. The suits were starting to approach the two now, tasers and shackles up and ready. Scoo, they're coming for us! What do we do? Scoo looked for an opening. All the doors were blocked. Except. Is this the great escape now? The suited ponies. And it's for the music! It's like now escape music or something! To prevent the village from freaking out. Fear was their tool. Oh, come on! Scoo spun around. Looking for an exit, there was only one, she realized. I have a plan. She whispered to Aurora. What's that? Clear, fly, fall, complete. Aurora nodded in understanding, her eyes widening. She repeated louder now, so the other frightened fillies could hear. Clear, fly, fall, complete. Got it. 
Go ahead. Oh. Scootaloo started counting. No. Aurora speaked as she backed into Scootaloo. The suits were mere feet away now. Three! A collective shout reverberated around the room as every filly that could actually fly took off. The suited ponies gasped and fell back, unsure of where to go. There was too much confusion. A few of the faster thinking ones took off as well, tasers at the ready, aiming at the closest Pegasus they could take. Step one! Clear! Scootaloo screamed. With her command, do, the failure Do you believe you can actually escape the rainbow doors. factory then? Hooves connected with heads, and while some of the students fell lifeless to the floor, the majority of casualties were the suited ponies. Scootaloo and Aurora landed on the scaffolding right by the door and reached to open it. It was locked. Oh god, what do we do now? Aurora I don't know. Cried. What will you do? It's still unclear. She shouted, turning around and bucking the door. Aurora followed her, focusing the brunt of her blows to the part of the wall where the latch would be. Rainbow Dash on the other side of the scaffolding recovered from her initial shock of the rebellion and noticed Skulu pounding on the door. Kill her! She screamed at the other important looking ponies. <sighs> she started to Why do you have to kill? Why do you have to kill? Skulu closed her eyes, pounding harder and harder on the door. It started to creak and splinter. Any second now, she thought. Rainbow Dash will get here. It's over. I'm doomed. Oh, she come cried, on! But there were no more. You are left, very much but doomed. Came. The door started to split from its frame. Now leaning inward, it wouldn't be long until it was open. She opened her clenched eyes, peeking up at the scaffolding. All the remaining ponies were there, pressed together, holding the enraged blue Pegasus and her cronies back. <sighs> They wouldn't last long. I don't think there's any escape really. Watched, twitching, and I don't sense there's the an escape. So I'm even landing in the great maw of the Spectra machine. The pink pony from Levitating Acres was there. And she turned to Skulu and Aurora, just as the door blew back into the hall behind. Why? The pink pony demanded with pain in her voice. She opened her mouth to speak again, but was cut short as the pile of pigs. There's no escape. With Rainbow Dash just, standing just think there's no the escape. She was on there's no books. escape. Her front two there's no there. escape. A small gash down her side leaked red, and her multicolored mane was torn in a patch. An unearthly howl passed her lips, and her rose eyes were drained of any sanity that was left. Come on, Aurora! We've got to fly if we're going to live! Scooby pleaded. Where to, though? Around. I can't! This is too much! I haven't healed! Aurora looked at Scooby with wide open eyes. You go, Scootaloo. Tell everyone what happens here. Let them know. She glanced back at the wall of students, almost bare now, as Rainbow Dash's bloodlust tore them to pieces. Her blue coat was now Do you think it's safe? But oh, as she the Do you think it's safe telling people or telling ponies about this place? Could take a small shortage of rainbows. Did, you put them are spies on the ground classes or something. Or failures. But for now, all she knew is that school had to die. Violently, if possible. Decades of working for the Rainbow Factory had fractured her. She was the only one allowed out in public, and keeping the horrible secret with her since childhood had only led to psychological problems that no amount of therapy could cure. No. Skulu was her last link on sanity, and her failure had deleted that. There was no logic in her mind anymore. No care. No capacity for compassion. Only hate. Pure, concentrated, and evil <sighs> hatred filled the gap. Her love for school. Yeah, Robo basically hates Rainbow. Rainbow no. Dash was no more. Only this monster remained. Scootaloo hates. Scootaloo hates Scootaloo Rainbow Dash now, basically. Softly into the yellow Pegasus beside her. I'm sorry. I never knew you until all this. I'm sorry we had to meet like this, and I'm sorry we have to part like this. She snapped. She oh, had yeah. found more tears. 
any meeting of a friend is a welcome meeting. Now, you heard the other pony. Fly, Skulu! Fly! 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 Goodbye. Goodbye, Aurora. With that, Skulu levitated and spun around, looking into the yellow pony's eyes one last time, and launched down the cramped corridor. She had no idea where she was going, but any chance at freedom was one she had to take. Aurora yeah. blinked a couple times, standing in front Just of risk it. Sometimes you can it. Sometimes you have to risk it. In her way to you have to risk the it. Blue pony tossed the last you might die in the process, but risk it. And slowly walked oh, come on! How cute. You think that you, a useless, broken pile of manure, could possibly stand in my way? <laughs> you really make me laugh. None of you can compete with the awesome power I have. Love you are not awesome, Rainbow! Aurora straightened herself in rebellion as Rainbow Dash stopped. You've changed! Her. Aurora stayed in front of Dash, barring her entry down the corridor beyond. Well then, bitch, let's see if love will overcome this one. And with that, Rainbow Dash grabbed one of Aurora's bandaged wings and pulled, tying oh. it off of her completely. Aurora collapsed That's disgusting. on her grinding her teeth in horrible pain. Oh. She didn't scream. She wouldn't give in to Rainbow Dash. No. Rainbow grabbed her other wing and dragged her kicking and moaning down to the center of the scaffolding. She lifted Aurora by the wing, laughing quietly to herself as the look of intense agony appeared on Aurora's face. Rainbow Dash took to the air, bringing the squirming yellow and green pony with her over the top of the machine. With a squeak of evil laughter, she jerked at the wing with her hoof. It oh, that's so disgusting, man! And Aurora fell. Oh, these sound effects, man! The door on the scaffolding closed with a gust of wind, just as the machine began pumping out the brightest greens and yellows it had ever produced. And there was no one around to see it. Scootaloo went backwards momentarily, her heart pounding. The noise of the constant thumping drowned out any other sound in her head, her ears throbbing along with it. The corridor was just like the one that led to the theater room, cramped, with dozens of obstacles jutting out at random intervals. Straight behind her, maybe 500 meters now, the bloody mare that used to be Rainbow Dash was cruising along herself. Both Pegasus sight were completely straight. Hoofs forward, wings beating at an impossible count. Ah. Trying to escape. I got a feeling gonna die, uh. uh. Looked for it again. I got a feeling gonna die, Scootly. That's all that matters, she thought. What's ahead of me? There's no changing what's behind me. Ignore it. Focus. For the second time in many days, a flood of instinct overtook Scootaloo. And despite the terror she felt in her body, the sorrow that had surrounded her, and the evil behind her, her worries melted away, and the thought of flying encased her very being. Down under wires and pipes, she ducked. Oh, up and around various workers whose complaints and shouts were ignored, only to be repeated momentarily as the raging pony behind. There's no cameras or. Can they call doors that close after escape before escape opportunities? Escape? Yeah. Corners at impossible speeds, zipped up and down countless sets of stairs, trying to shake her murderous tail, but to no avail. She contemplated every nook and cranny she passed, briefly considering hiding. She struck that idea down as insane as Rainbow Dash may be. She was still too smart to overlook any possible spot Skulu may be. But there, ahead of her, Skulu thought she found a solution. A garbage van of some kind, sticking out from the wall, down to the floor below. Momentarily, she gave thought to where it may lead, whether out of the factory or into some incinerator she could not tell. But it was probably worth the risk. She snuck one last glance behind her to make sure the unstable mare was far away enough. Rainbow Dash was paying no attention to any hazard as she sought her prey, tearing through electrical wires and ricocheting off of heated pipes, going through any obstacle rather 
rather than around it to save time. But the collisions had slowed her down enough to give Skulu a chance. She slammed to a sudden halt over the open vent, hoping for her life. Fall. She muttered, closing her eyes and her wings, resisting the urge to start flapping immediately. She counted suddenly to herself as shadows rushed past her closed eyes, hoping for the best of where this vent led. One, two, three. three. She opened her eyes and her wings and looked up. Hovering. Rainbow Dash was up above, looking down into the vent. Her eyes were buggy and twitched, her hooves pounding on the edge of the vent. She was too large to follow, the filly having barely made it in herself. But then, the anger in her face vanished. Oh, yeah? To be replaced by a malicious grin. She started laughing again, the cackle. Echoing down the vent and reverberating. Do you think it's wise to laugh? You moron! You never did have a good sense of direction! She teased, laughing again. Scootaloo finally looked down, getting her bearings. <sighs> she squealed. She was in the theater room again. Only by now, it was full of suited ponies, circling her. Their masked faces seemed to be grinning at her as Rimada shouted orders down the vent. Don't let her die! I must do it! Subdue her! Catch her! She whinnied in glorious victory as the suit shocked Skulu with a um, and as her limp body began to fall from the air, caught her and brought her um, to the floor. Scootaloo blasted You can have a bad conscience, Rainbow Dash, you know that. Her, but she came to lying on the cold cloud floor. Metal shackles preventing her from moving. She struggled to get free. She could hardly shake. No. The chains lifted her slightly, bringing her small body eye to eye with a pegasus in front of her. The pony was a deep blood red, glistening in the artificial light of the factory. What color is the factory? Is it red? Glorious colors of the rainbow, but was mostly the same red color as her coat of fur. Oh. Chunks of skin were missing from small spots, and her hair was ripped in some places. Oh. All the patches of skin and others. Sounds painful. The only clue Skulu had as to who this used to be were the rose irises focused on her. Any final words, you miserable, worthless whore of a fool? Skulu brought her chin high, still demanding even the tiniest fraction of dignity. You have beautiful eyes. What? Did Rainbow Dash say you got beautiful beautiful eyes, or was that Scootaloo saying you got beautiful eyes? But anyway, uh, I sense that Scootaloo is now dead. In a sense, Rain Fa Rainbow Factory is actually quite a short story compared to Sparrow's other reading of Awoken. Because Aw Awoken, I think it was Awoken, that had multiple chapters compared to Rainbow Dash is basically a one story. Um, deal. Okay, on to the main reading then. The main... I actually like this, I actually like this reading. Uh, how many times Sweetie Bell has to say, Oh, come on, in the middle of the story. And when that first pony uh, basically was falling to the sky or the bone was crunching, I made my neck click. And I thought, Oh, that's... Painful. Wait, oh, it sounded painful, and that's a realistic bone crunching sound effect. It makes you. If you heard bones breaking, it's sickening. Oh, come on! 
you a little bit late there, um, Sweetie Belle, but you made the story even darker. But the thing is, even if Scoodloo actually escaped the factory, I doubt she will still get far in terms of spies on the ground. Because if you tell, there must be like a like a, a secret service to the weather factory. Because you got you know what Scoodloo what Scoodloo looks like. They're gonna say, look for this pony. Have like a a police force or something. Secret police. And now the questions like like I said in in this reading. How big is the Rainbow Factory? How big is the Rainbow Factory? Factory. Just thinking, oh, because I'm playing, I play some Gmod uh, maps of the Rain F Rainbow Factory, and it's a, quite a dark area, and it looks scary, and this story reminds me of walking through those corridors. It is a scary place. Sweetie Belle, you don't want to be up there, would you? Of course not. It is a, a scary story. Okay, maybe not as scary as the um awoken. Oh come on! Oh shut the fuck up! Goodness sake! I remember them doing that reaction, and it, and it was a red or blue pill. I mean, it's, it's a pill all along. But is it the worst or the gruesome um grim dogs? Probably probably not. Uh, not much let's say uh deaths was in the story. It could have been in my opinion the story could have been longer. The story could have been longer. The story could be longer with probably more deaths more people reading, or well, more people, more people, more ponies in the in the factory. But I, f what we, well, I, what we said before between Skylar and me, they don't really um, explain what the weather machine or the special machine or the killing machine, or what machine is. They don't really describe it. And I'm thinking it's one of those, you go on, on, on a ferry boat and you've got like a chump, 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 chump. Sort of a, almost like a, a baler. When you're baling, baling like, um, carbals. It's like a baler to kill. And those, if it's blades in there, it must be pretty damn sharp. And it's and you're on the ferry boat, you're unconscious. You're gonna get your neck chopped off, by the way. Then you got probably got another machine that will probably break your bones, and and that will be turned into a spectra or something. Ah. Ah, man, this reading. Okay, I hope you like this um, reaction or my reactions I do, and I will see you next time. Oh, yes.